Now in this uh, question 16 as it reads, certain quantity of water cools from 70 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius in the first 5 minutes and to 54 degrees Celsius in the next 5 minutes. You see this is a kind of question in which you will be assuming Newton's law of cooling. The temperature of the surroundings is that is what is required. If you apply Newton's law of cooling straight away, you see if it is coming from 70 degree to 60 degree Celsius, so I am writing 70 minus 60 and it is coming in 5 minutes. This must be proportional to the average temperature of 70 and 60 that is equal to 65 degrees Celsius minus the temperature of the surroundings that what is expected to be calculated in this particular question. This is the first equation you are forming. Now in the next equation you will see that it is coming from 60 degrees Celsius to 54 degrees Celsius in another 5 minute. So this will be proportional to average of these two, average of these two is 57 degree minus T. So these are the two equations based on Newton's law of cooling you are supposed to find. Now you will be dividing these two equations and ultimately you will be getting the expression for T, unknown T that is the temperature of the surroundings to be equal to 45 degrees Celsius. So for that matter the correct option will be the first one 45 degrees Celsius. So that explains question number 16. Now let us discuss the next question that is question number 17. Now in the next question that is question 17, it reads that a monatomic gas at a pressure P having a volume V expands isothermally to a volume 2V. This is a question of thermodynamics, maybe gas equations you can say and then adiabatically to a volume 16V. There is a two step expansion, one is isothermal, another one is adiabatic. You have to find out the final pressure of the gas. You have to take gamma as 5 by 3. Now you see in the first go, if you are uh, using the equation, this is PV is equal to constant because it is isothermal process. So the pressure will be coming out to be P by 2 from P. This is the first step process. But in the second go, you have to use the equation PV raised to power gamma is equal to constant. Now see the volume is moving from 2V to 16V that is 8 times increase. Therefore, the new pressure will be P by 2 upon 8 raised to the power gamma understand because V raised per gamma is involved here. So if you solve this thing for gamma is equal to 5 by 3, you will find that ultimately the pressure is coming out to be P by 64. This will be the final pressure or you can say this will be the final answer option number 3 as it has been mentioned in this question and that explains question number 17. Now let us discuss next question that is question number 18. Now in the next question that is question number 18 as it reads a thermodynamic system again you see it is a question of thermodynamics. A thermodynamic system undergoes cyclic process ABCDA the process has been given to you in the question as shown in figure. Now the work done by the system in the cycle is and the choices are as follows. Now see in this question if you try to see here you have a cyclic process that is clockwise and here you have an anti-clockwise cyclic process and both of them have been given to have equal area. As you know in pressure volume diagram, the area under the diagram is the work done but clockwise cycle work we happen to take by convention positive and anti-clockwise we happen to take negative. So as much positive area you have here, so much amount of negative area also you have. So net area is what? Zero. So the work done for this system will be zero and most appropriate answer for this question will be the fourth option and that explains question number 18. Now let us discuss next question that is question 19. Now in this uh, question number 19 as it reads the mean free path of molecules of a gas whose radius r has been given to you is inversely proportional to. Now you see this is a very direct formula based question if you see the mean free path you can have the expression 1 by root 2 pi d square n this is a very standard expression based on that you could do this question you see root 2 is the correction factor here n is the number density of gas molecules d is the diameter of gas molecules diameter or radius it matters same thing so that proportionality is concerned 
So mean free path is proportional to 1 by r square and that is what is demanded. So most appropriate answer for this question will be the second option. This was a very direct you can say formula based question and that explains question number 19. Now let us discuss the next question that is question number 20. Now in this uh, next question that is question 20 as it reads if n1, n2 and n3 are the fundamental frequencies of three segments into which a string is divided then the original fundamental frequency n of the string is given by obviously this is a question of sonometer wire and you should use the fundamental frequency equation mind you this is a kind of question frequently asked without even changing the data every two three years later you will find that again this kind of question appears anyway the fundamental frequency if I use n is 1 by 2L under root T by M. So you see here this length is directly proportional to 1 by frequency and this is being divided into 3 segments. So see if L is being divided into L1 plus L2 plus L3, so naturally the frequency will be holding the relation 1 by N that will be 1 by N1 plus 1 by N2 plus 1 by N3. This is a kind of relation it will be maintaining with frequency. So for that matter the most appropriate answer for this question will be option number 1. So that explains question number 20. Now let us discuss the next question that is question 21.